So who out there remembers Shiny Games Entertainment? Anyone? No one? No one remembers them? They were they were pretty good, I mean. They made a few good games. And then again, they did make a few shitty games. But neither one of those mattered today, because what we are going to be playing is one of their rather interesting titles known as Messiah. We'll be learning more about Messiah as we continue on to it, but, well, look at this guy. This guy is our main character, and isn't he adorable? But not entirely sin-free. But let's go ahead and get started into Messiah. And as we get started, we will be playing on the normal difficulty and cinematic time. I've got something for you to do today. What? I want you to clean up something for me. That doesn't sound like fun. Actually, it should be a pretty big job. Why would I want to do that? Because I want you to. And I think it would build character. I got enough character. Couldn't someone else do it? I'm sending you to Earth. It's in sad shape, and I'm hoping you might straighten it up a little. I'd rather not. Yeah, enjoy your trip. Ah! So I'm going, Lenny, take your mom to the hospital. If it's an emergency, take her now. And he's like, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. No, 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 no. She's up, she's asleep right now. He calls me up two hours before the shift. He makes me come on. Really? Of course, I gotta come in. This is the second night in a row I gotta work for that guy. You know what else I heard? I heard that the Father Prime has some scientist goons trying to open up a doorway to another dimension. Can you believe that? It's crazy. <laughs> another dimension? Jeez. Who do they think they are? What? What? something? And welcome to the wonderful dystopian future of Messiah. I am currently in the body of a light cop. We'll be seeing more of Bob the Cherub in just a little bit. First though, let's go ahead and get acquainted with some of the controls. You know, it's got general third-person shooter controls and Right now, we're just going to do a little bit of a tutorial. Anytime we see a handprint on a box, things overheated here. We can actually. It's basically a button. And most of the time, those boxes will be explosive. We can actually set off those explosive boxes without any horrible repercussions. And that's that right there is one of the first weapons we can get. It's basically a shotgun, or what they call a pump gun. We're going to hold off on getting that for right now, though. And these little switches on the floor here will tell us what type of person is able to access the door, but hey, we're getting a message from God. Let's check. Let's see what he has to say. Now, there is quite a lot of words here, and you can pause this on your own volition, but basically, it's just, this is how we get objectives from God. He sends a horrible ringing message, possibly through Metatron to us. And he's just telling us, well, welcome to the mortal world. You're very weak. Be careful. 
this game requires you to actually be fairly careful and try to use imaginative ways. Yeah, we get off 6.30 today, you remember that? Oh, we do? Well, I'll help you get off early. <laughs> but you do have to use imaginative ways to get through some obstacles, such as getting past this barricaded door. And we do have to cleanse the sinners of the world, even if they don't seem that uh, uh, apparently evil. And this big metal gate in front of us is just your basic door. Thankfully, it doesn't usually require any kind of uh, special mechanisms to get it open, but sometimes we do have to find switches and things like that. And in case you couldn't tell, it was the future. I don't actually know what those rockets are for. I think they transport materials into space, but you know, sometimes if you want to keep quiet, even when killing some guys... Who gives a freaking shit about a baby anyway? Why are you getting... Why are you shitting on a baby? Get off me! But yeah, we do have a stealth kill ability. <laughs> Obviously, if you go in guns blazing, you will catch the attention of about everyone nearby. And, well, each body will only take about five hits before it gets taken out completely. So... Uh, it's not always the best idea to go into combat. But what we need to do here is actually to get rid of the comp body and hop into one of these scientist bodies. But we need to do that without being seen by the cop after we hop out. You only have about a three second window there before the cop becomes aware of what's going on. So you really have to position yourself very well. Man, this job sucks. Hey, why don't you help me out for a little while? And I think I will help you out, buddy. Lighten the load. What the hell just happened? Why is Johnson at navigation? Security. Fire Johnson. You wanna drop? Yep, well, I'm a mischievous little bastard. But, yeah, I don't exactly know why those goons decided to attack that scientist instead of me, but, you know, it worked out for my favor. But now that we do have this scientist, we can head upstairs and actually find a way to unlock that gate there. Also, yeah, the AI in this game is not the smartest in the world. They'll see dead bodies and not really give a shit. They'll only really react if you're actively doing something in their vision. But since we are in a scientist's body, we can now get past this laser field and press this nearby button. Holy cow! That this nice scientist is guarding for us for some reason. Unlocking gate four. So now that unlocks the gate downstairs, but before we head down there, there's actually a little side barracks area over here. We can see what the cops do in their off time. You know, they chill and have conversations. Sometimes they watch something entertaining on TV. Ah uh, yes, dystopian futures funny song videos. And sometimes they try to do push-ups. He tries so hard. But what we actually have in the back of the room is a weapon dispenser. We can actually get an unlimited amount of a particular type of weapon for men here, which in this case is a flamethrower. The thing is though, since we are a scientist and not a cop, the cops will not actually like us if we pick up a weapon. One warning to put that thing down! But to show off some combat and how janky it is. Yeah, the flamethrower can be a very, very dangerous weapon. 
Especially when the AI enemies decide to walk over burning corpses and then set themselves ablaze. Now, to talk about the possession mechanic a bit, uh, depending on what difficulty you play on, the easy difficulty allowing you to jump from any position, normal requiring you to pretty much jump from the back, and the hard difficulty making it, well, pretty much forcing you to jump from a very, very pinpoint position. As far as I can tell, that's the only difference in the difficulties. But yeah, since we are playing on normal, if we want to possess somebody, we do have to jump into their back. And obviously, if anybody sees us possessing somebody, especially a cop, they will proceed to attack us. You really do have to make sure and possess somebody outside their field of vision. Also, if even if you're a cop, if you then proceed to point your gun at another cop, they will assume you're aggressive and start attacking. But I guess since we're heading into a highly sensitive area. I have to sterilize this before we can go on. I'm sure that's not a loading screen. And we have another message from God. What does he have to tell us this time? Well, he's going to tell us about our our boss of the game, known as Father Prime, who is apparently the totalitarian dictator of this futuristic society that we haven't actually seen anything evil that they're doing. So I'm not actually sure why God is wanting us to come down here and cleanse the world. But obviously, since this is a tutorial stage, well, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. And laser grits hurt, so let's use our massive brain-solving prowess to, uh, to jump over, basically. So we'll, I'll go ahead and grab this machine gun. Flamethrower, while very high damaging, is also very dangerous to you and very short range. The machine gun, though, is uh, fairly accurate. It's got a uh, good output. And we'll be seeing more shooting action in the next update. Right now, though, we just don't really want to get into a whole lot of uh, shooting escapades. Because we'll pretty much lose. Even though I will say that anytime you do possess a new body, uh, Bob will automatically drain the life of whatever body he's in so that he's back to full. The only problem is that that also drains the body down to however much Bob is missing. <laughs> Also, I just wanted to make sure that guy was taken out so he wasn't shooting at us for the next section. And these weird little robots you see sometimes are actually... body decomposers. They'll make it so that NPC bodies aren't just... Sorry. Or they're not just chilling around, but... Well, you can cripple the body you're in without killing it, and it's kind of grisly. You just kind of scream in pain, it's... Uh. But Bob doesn't care, Bob's got a mission. And that mission is some climbing. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's a good idea not to stand on that glass, unless you want to be dropped in some radioactive goop. But while you're in Bob's body, or Bob's form I should say, you have no actual offensive abilities. You can fly a bit, you can take very little damage, and you can get through some smaller crawl spaces, but for the most part you do not want to be in his form unless, well, you have to do some wonderful climbing and platform puzzles. Thankfully though, we can break any large falls by just kind of gliding downward with our wings. And the point of these fans is that there is a very, very high platform. It's basically the roof. And we're going to have to get up there somehow. And we have three different fans with buttons underneath. 
by pressing those buttons we are able to readjust the fans and what we're going to need to do is basically make a little staircase of fans to get up to the roof. Fairly simple but you know it takes quite a bit of time. So we're just going to skip over that so now all the fans are in place. And it's merely a task of fighting the controls to say the least. They're not uh, they're not the most user friendly I suppose, especially with the flying. But now that we're at the top here, we now have another new person or type of person to possess. What is up? If you couldn't tell from the Geiger counter sounds and radioactive symbols, these guys are radiation workers is what they call them. This particular one I have actually has a set of tongs you can use to pick up a radioactive battery to carry around, which will then proceed to kill anybody not in a radiation suit, which is kind of gruesome. And we won't actually be seeing that right now, because we just want to go ahead and solve this fairly simple press all the button puzzle. All stations are active and online. Power restored to all yeah, none of the puzzles in this starting area are obviously going to be very hard. They do get a bit more challenging later on, but still, this is a tutorial just teaching you how to do things. But by turning on all the power to those consoles, we're able to call the elevator with its rather tricky controls, I suppose. Basically what you have to do is hold down the action and press forward or back to go up or down a floor. And it's just the action button also drops your gun. So basically while you're trying to hold down the action button to activate the elevator, you might also be trying to put down your gun or ready your gun. And it just becomes kind of a cumbersome activity. Thankfully we'll have a lot more ease of use with elevators in future videos. And you may be wondering what it is that Bob is currently trying to do right now. Well, if you remember back at the start of the level, there was that one particular door that needed a commander and... Well, what we are trying to do for this entire level is pretty much trying to find just a commander. And you know where we're going to find a commander? In this room. But we're going to have to do that next time on more Messiah.